Hey everyone, thanks for checking out this second half of my Vita 2012 retrospective. In the first bit I went over all the physical games, uh, this time I'm going to go through the digital notable exclusives that came out for the Vita. So this is something, there's not that many so I should have put it with the first video, but the first video was running so long that I just decided to do it separately. So yeah, let's get right into it with the 2012 digital notable exclusives for the Vita. Starting with the launch titles, we got Tales from Space Mutant Blobs Attack. This is a sequel to the PS3 games Tales from Space About a Blob, which was an exclusive Vita game until it was later ported to the PS3 and 360. The game is a 2D physics-based puzzle game where the blob has to eat objects in each stage to grow large enough to overcome obstacles. There was also Super Stardust Delta. A port of the PS3 hit Twin Stick Shooter Super Stardust HD. This uses the Vita's unique controls to add new options including creating shockwaves, black holes, shooting swarm missiles, tapping asteroids to destroy them, and tilting to look around the planet. We also got Escape Plan, a room escape puzzle game with an interesting black and white art style where the player controls two characters trapped in a series of rooms that they manipulate using the Vita's controls in order to find a way out. There was also Hustle Kings, a port of the PS3 Billiards game. And three small AR games, Cliff Diving, Fireworks, and Table Soccer. These three small games utilize the camera and AR features on the Vita. And Plants vs Zombies, a port of PopCap's tower defense like hit. Shortly after launch we got Mortarstorm RC. A not quite top down, more like a third quarters perspective remote control vehicle racer that uses the Motorstorm license. The game was released on the PS3 and Vita, but I feel like the Vita version was the one that got the most attention. The game uses 8 different vehicle types and 16 different tracks. DLC also added more vehicles and tracks later. Next was Suniomi Demon Arts. A 2D side-scrolling action game with an incredible art style inspired by Japanese Sumi paintings. The art style is similar to Okami. In the game, the player controls Agura, an ink demon who can jump, attack, and use ink to create platforms using the touchscreen. Following that was Star Drone Extreme, a puzzle game where the Star Drone is constantly in motion and you touch the screen to interact with objects that alter its movement. The goal is to move around each stage collecting objects. Then we get Tabletop Tanks, another tabletop AR game, but this is a different developer. This one is kind of like a take on Atari's Combat, where you move a tank around the environment taking out enemies. Then we got Pulse AR. An exclusive puzzle game where you use reflectors and splitters to guide a laser beam to its target in each level. Then we get to Sound Shapes. This is a cool music based platformer like game with a great electronic soundtrack including artists like Dead Mouse. There's a stage building mode with some additional Vita controls and some sharing options. This also came out on the PS3 and later the PS4, but I think the Vita version is the one worth checking out. Next is Table Ice Hockey. This is another AR tabletop sports game by the developer of Table Soccer. This time it's a hockey game. Then we got New Little King Story. This is an updated port of the Wii exclusive Slow Life Sim strategy game in which the player controls the young king of a new kingdom. As the king you can command your citizens to help build up your kingdom, go adventuring, find treasure, and then fight enemies from the seven rival kingdoms. While expanding and upgrading your kingdom, 
You'll have to train the civilians in different jobs which change their abilities and weaknesses. It's a really cute and fun game, and I'm really surprised it only ever released on the Wii and Vita. Next was Dokuru. A side-scrolling puzzle platformer with a neat children's book-like art style. The player controls a skeleton Dokuru, whose lord brings home a captive princess, and that inspires Dokuru to turn against his lord and help save her. You can interact with switches, push and pull objects, attack with your bones, carry the princess, and change into prince form to help guide the princess through different areas. Following that was Orgorhythm. An interesting game that tries to mix strategy with rhythm gameplay, where you control three different groups of elemental warriors and send them out to attack enemies. Tapping along with the rhythm levels up each group so they perform better in combat. And the last big game of the year was Uncharted Fight for Fortune. A card battle game like Magic the Gathering where two players go against each other with their decks. You can challenge other players online or go against a series of CPU opponents. The base game included over 300 cards inspired by Uncharted 1, Golden Abyss, and the Eye of Indra video series. DLC added extra cards from Uncharted 2 and 3. And lastly, we just got some ports of popular mobile games like Burn the Rope and Jetpack Joyride. Uh, definitely going to be more coming up. Uh, stay tuned for my 2013 retrospectives for the Vita. I'm going to try and get the whole Vita library covered before the production run stops on Vita Carts in March 2019. So everyone can uh, check out good Vita games before they skyrocket in price as everyone tries to get a hold of the good ones. Uh, yeah, thanks for checking this out. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.